Hi there, this is Peter Upvold, and welcome back to the Stealth Mac podcast and the introduction to the Terminal series. This is part three where I'm going to be looking at some more advanced file management tasks. Now first of all, I'd like to ask that if you do have any feedback on this screencast or any other in the series, whether it's good or bad, please do send it to feedback at thestealthmac.com. I'd really appreciate any feedback you do have. So having said that, um, let's let's get into what we're going to look at today. So in the last part of this series, we looked at file management within the terminal. How you can copy, move and rename files, how you can create directories, and how you can remove files as well. But there were some things that I deliberately left out of that show. In this screencast, we're going to pick up on some of that stuff and continue looking at more file management tasks that you can do from within the terminal. So again, if you haven't watched part one or part two, you might want to go back uh, over that, especially if you're not familiar with the basics of the terminal. So uh, so let's get started with part three here. So what I should have is here I have, let me just open that back up again, I have the stuff directory which I've changed a little bit from last time um, and this is the folder which we're going to be using and it has all the example files in it that we're going to be using to do our file management with. So let me just show you what we have here in the finder before we open up the terminal. I've got this path1 folder and I've got a couple of files in here and a subfolder in here with an image in it, image in it. and then I've got path2 with a couple of text files. So just so you know what the structure looks like now so that we can um, start manipulating it. So. I'm going to go across to my terminal session. Again, I've made the font big and everything. Uh, you want to open a uh, terminal up. And I've changed directory already into my stuff directory here. So let me just show you. I'm in users Peter stuff. So, as I said, I left a few things out from the last screencast on file management. Um, and the first thing we're going to look at is copying recursively. Now I showed you how you can use CP and then the source and then the destination to copy a single file um, in the terminal. I showed you that in part two. But what happens if you want to copy a folder which has files and maybe subfolders inside it um, and copy that into a, into a second location? Well if we try that, if I say copy path1 subfolder which has some items in it if I try and copy that into path 2, you'll get this error message from CP. It can't copy it because it's a directory. So, you know, it's not a single item because it has things inside it. So it can't do that. Now, the way that we resolve that problem and actually copy that directory is we have to issue a switch to CP, which is dash R. And what that means is recursively. So it will go into the directory look at every single file and subfolder in that directory and copy everything inside it as well. So if I issue cp-r path1 subfolder path2 this time we get no error message and as I um, as I pointed out if it, if it all goes right you probably won't get a message back so uh, that apparently is copied if I now just ls-l path2 we should have now that's interesting actually what I told it to do there was to copy sub path1 sub4 let me just check that I'm not sure whether that's done what I wanted it to do but it's a good demonstration of how you need to be clear about what you want the computer to do so let's have a look here path1 subfolder contained this image here and now path2 contains that image. So what it's actually done is it's copied the contents of that folder. So let me just undo what I just did by deleting that file and try it again this time without that trailing slash at the end here. If I take that off and copy path1 subfolder to path2 recursively I'll go straight to the finder so I can see what that's done now is instead of copying the contents of a subfolder it's actually copied the subfolder and then the contents as well that's originally what I wanted to do 
So let's let's just recap quickly. If you want to copy a whole folder with a load of uh, files inside it and subfolders, you need to use cp dash r and it makes a big difference whether or not you include this trailing slash at the end as I've just found out unintentionally if you add that trailing slash it's going to copy the contents of a subfolder here and if you don't add the trailing slash it's going to copy the subfolder as well as everything inside it so there we go that's how we copy recursively and as I said this is why I left this out of part two is it does start to get a bit more complicated now and um, as I've just demonstrated things don't always go exactly how you expect them to if you're not careful. So there we go what we've done is we've copied path 1 and subfolder into path 2. Now so that's how to copy recursively how do we move recursively? You might think you just apply that same logic to MV and do MV-R but actually you don't need to. <laughs> uh, so uh, consistency, eh? So let's let's have a look again at what we have here. And say if I wanted to copy the entire of path one into path two, I don't actually need to do anything special. I can just say mv path one path two, and that's going to uh, move. Sorry, not copy. <clears throat> that's going to move everything in path one into path two. If I list again, and then list inside path two you'll see the entire of path one's gone there. And we can verify this in the finder. Path one's gone from the top level and we have path two and path one inside that and everything inside path one is now in there. So if you want to move a tree of files you don't actually need to issue anything special to MV you just do it as normal. And what I'm actually going to do now is move path one back. So if I say move path two slash path one to dot and dot if I haven't explained this before refers to the current working directory so I'm just going to move path 1 back out to where we are now and list again we have path 1 path 2 and if we go back to the finder everything should have returned the way it was so again if you want to move recursively don't need to do anything special you just move the source folder to the destination folder now the next thing we could look at is how to delete recursively. But a, uh, a serious warning should, should be attached to this particular bit of the screencast. This is a very powerful um, command, removing recursively, and if you are not careful about exactly what you're deleting, you, very mo you, you might regret issuing the command. So always be very careful that you know what you're doing before you remove things recursively. Cause as I mentioned last time, there is no trash and there is no turning back. So, so just be aware of that. But if I wanted to remove a whole tree of directory, uh, a tree, a tree of files with with folders and subfolders and so on. So, say if I wanted to delete path to subfolder here, because I'm done with this copy now. What I have to do is say rm dash r path to subfolder. I'm just going to check that is what I want. Path to subfolder. I want to delete that. And that's it. So as I <laughs> as I mentioned, that has deleted path to subfolder and all the files contained within it. And as I mentioned, you do need to be very careful with that tool because if I accidentally pressed return before I'd finished typing the command, I could have accidentally deleted the whole of path two. So again, that's something you do need to be a little bit careful with. But that's how you remove um, that's how you remove files recursively as well. So there we go. That's really tied up the copying, moving, and deleting from part two that we looked at. There are a few other things I want to look at in this screencast. Now we've looked at how to manipulate files, but we haven't actually looked at how we might view them from within the terminal. Now you've got to remember that you know you can't do something like view an image from the terminal very well because well it doesn't really support images, so it's not great at that. But I have a few example te text files as um, as you probably saw, and what we can do is we can view those text files from within the terminal. So if I just change directory into path one and show you what I have in here, 
Oh, by the way, I've just used a. I I used this um, H command line switch to ls. I haven't actually shown that before. What that does is it shows the size of the file here in a human readable. It's not in bytes. It actually adjusts rather than four thousand bytes or whatever. I just like like uh, seeing that. So that's that's the dash H switch to ls. Okay. So as I mentioned, I'm in path one here. I have a couple of uh, text files. Now I can display a text file by t using the command cat. If I just say cat, as you can see, it's just printed out what's contained in that file. And you'll actually notice that it's uh, it's finished the output of this file and then gone straight back to the prompt without a new line. That's because I didn't actually put a new line at the end of the file. So you know it's very basic. It's not. It you know it will just print you out what's in that file. And actually that's uh, interesting there. So cat. You you can actually get very very advanced with cat. It's called cat, not anything to do with um, felines. It's actually called cat because you can concatenate two files together by giving it lots of arguments. But as a sort of side effect, you can use it just to to view one file. Um, so let's let's cat our other file, cat long file, and I deliberately made this a very long file. And what you've what you probably noticed is it's scrolled all the way off the screen, which is fine because we've got a scroll bar here, so we can scroll back up and look at it. So you know, cat works for this too, but there's another command called less, which in cases where you have massive great big files is sometimes more useful. So it's another way to be viewing files. Uh, viewing text files and so on from the terminal. So if I um, if, if I just what I'll do is I'll clear out this display because we've got a lot of uh, a lot of stuff there. Um, if I now say less long file, and actually there's a similar command called more, and less is slightly more advanced than more. So if you see more, it's quite similar to less but I'll just say less long file dot txt and what this time happens is see here's the start of the file here and it doesn't it can't display the entire file on one screen so what it does is it, it keeps us at the start of the file and I can actually use the arrow keys here to scroll up and down. Actually there's not very much to scroll up and down, it only just falls off the end of the screen. But if this was a really really long file I can use the arrow keys to scroll up and down and when I'm done I have to press the Q key and that takes me out of less. So if you've got a big text file you need to read in the terminal, uh, sometimes a readme file or something, you can use less and actually I can do it with the short file as well. Uh, it's just going to tell me you know that's the end of the file. So cat is a very very simple way to show the contents of a file and less is also very useful for showing the contents of a file if it's a long file and it's going to scroll off the end of the screen. So we've looked at copying, moving and deleting recursively. We've looked at displaying files in the command line. There's one more thing I want to get to in this screencast and that is how you deal with file names with spaces and special characters. You'll know um, if you've been following this series that the, the command line breaks up the command that you give it into the different bits of the command with the space character. If we look at this command there are two bits to this command. There's less which is the name of the program I want to run and there's this argument shortfile.txt and they're separated by space and if we have a more complicated command like ls-lh slash library there's a space you know this is the first bit this is the second bit with all the switches and this is the final bit so the space is very very important to the command line because it's how the space character is how it knows which bit of the command is which and how it understands what you're asking it to do so if you have a file name with a space in it, that presents a huge problem. And let me demonstrate this to you. If I come back out of here and go into path 2, um, I've got this file here, which doesn't, which, ha which 
doesn't have a space in the name. But I have this file here, and as, as you might notice, there's spaces in this file name. There's this I would try and cat this file just by typing it in episode 042. Probably should have picked a slightly shorter name, but there we go. Adapters SSD Drobo as Time Machine Drive.txt. So if I were to try and cat this file by typing in the file name we get errors. And let, let let me explain why these errors are happening. Cat is the program I want to run. This is the first um, the first argument and this is the terminal seeing the second argument. So what cat thinks I want to do is open a file called episode and then open a file called 042 and then open a file and then, and then the hyphens confused it even more. So you'll see when you get when you get file names with special characters and spaces in them, you suddenly have this problem um, using them in the terminal because the space is so important to the terminal. So there are a couple of ways round this problem. The first one, and probably the easiest to understand, the easiest to read, is to um, is to put um, a any argument which has a space or a special or not encase that in quotes then the terminal will treat the whatever you put in quotes as a single argument. So if I were to retype this and say, so I've used a single quote there, and I'll just go ahead and retype this out. Again, I probably should have picked a shorter name, but there we go. And then I close the quote at the end. Oh, I've actually spelt it wrong. If I just press the up um, arrow key on my keyboard, I can actually recall the last command that I typed and then just edit it. There we go. And as you can see, now it's worked. Because this is encased in quotes, cat sees this as a single argument, the file name, and it's at that file. So that's one way to do it. That's probably the easiest way to understand. The other way you can do it is you have to do something called, you have to escape each one of the special characters and you do that by putting a uh, which slash is it let me just look free space um, to show up by the way is I typed cat then I typed EPI or something last time and rather than you putting the quotes around the whole free space ignore this next space because it doesn't mean it's the end of this argument so this works if there's just like one or two spaces this might be slightly easier um, than than putting it in quotes I don't know uh, it's certainly I think less easy to read so I'm the right way to do this it's probably easier just to put it in quotes as you can see you also have to put the backslash in front of things like comma which is more complicated when you've got file names like this so the easiest way to get round that is if you do have a file name with it um, in either, um, and then the command line will understand um, it will understand what you're trying to say to it and uh, uh, you won't have problems so um, yeah just in case it in quotes or you have to put a backslash in front of every character which might confuse the terminal so there we go that is pretty much all I think I'm gonna look at in this screencast <laughs> okay so I had a few technical problems with the end of my recording and I did actually lose that the, the good news of course is I got most of it and I was just at the recap um, so I'm sorry about that but uh, hopefully the rest of the screencast was useful to you again if you do have any feedback feedback at thestealthmac.com if you could send it there I'd really appreciate it again thank you for watching the screencast I hope I'll uh, speak to you again on the Stealth Mac podcast thank you and bye